So I guess today is table day. I got two tables here. Uh, this one, this was another free table someone gave me. And it's put together with rivets, as you can tell, all the way around. Uh, and this top is literally cardboard. And I went up to the Home Depot. I bought this piece of finished plywood for $14. And it fits right on top of that. So what I have here is some Loctite all-purpose power grab, which I've used before. I actually did a, uh, a stick-on tile ceiling up in Maine. I used some of this stuff. Oh, it worked really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, power grab on the table. I'm going to put the sheet on top of that. I'm going to take two boards on top on the bottom. Give me a big clamp and clamp it. Not related to Jed in this particular case, but I uh, appreciate the reference. To the hillbillies, because this is kind of a, you know, it's kind of a redneck fix. You know, um, I generally like fixing things in general. In general, I generally and generally in general like fixing things. That's kind of what's fun for me. I was talking to somebody just a few days ago, probably Bill. I was telling him about this. When I was single one time, I met this young lady. And she said, well, what do you like to do for fun? And I said, well, you know, I like to work. And she decided she didn't want to continue having a relationship with me because she could not figure out how that could be any fun for her. I mean, if what I like to do is work, then where did that leave her? That left her. Unless, you know, like my mom and dad worked together. They were always working. They were farm kids, sharecroppers, kids, and they learned to work on the farm when they were young. And they would often buy something like an old house that was dilapidated and nobody wanted it, and they'd fix it up. Or they might buy an old boat, or they might buy an old car. They would often come to own something that was useless, worthless, or almost so, so much so that they get it for very little. And then they would they would fix it up, they'd paint it, they'd retire, repair it, you know, they'd do whatever needed to be done to make it nice. And I guess later on, you know, people started doing that and calling it, what do they call it, flipping houses? Well, it wasn't a thing back then. I mean, they didn't have HGTV television shows about flipping houses, but my mom and dad was doing it because they understood the value of a house and they liked to work, so they'd work together. They'd buy a house, they'd go in, mom would handle all the cleaning and dad would handle all the repair. And they both would paint, dad would do tile work, cabinet work, anything that needed done. My dad was handy and he would do that and she would help him and that worked out real nice for them. And they, you know, they never made a lot of money. They both worked in a little factory for a couch company down in Atlanta, but they did pretty well. Buying and selling houses and land and stuff like that. I'm having a hard time getting this stuff to come out of this tube. It's hurting my hand, squeezing on it. We'll get there. So anyway, I guess I come by naturally, have the ability and the desire to fix things up. Came from my folks, handed it down to me. You know, so that's what I'm doing, fixing things. I find that having a table is almost always handy. I mean, you know, no matter what you're doing, you generally need a flat surface. And if you've got a folding table, like I got, then whenever the need comes, you just unfold your folding table and go to work, you know? That works out real nice. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Basically, this piece is going to go right on top of that piece. Pretty as you please. Literally just fits right on there. Put this piece on top. I've got another piece I'll put on the bottom. I'll 
see what I'm doing here? I need to tilt the camera down any. Maybe. This is the hardest part right here. This part where you have it. Uh, get that on there. Twist it up tight so hold. Hmm. table and it occurred to me like the edges they're not you can kind of lift up on them and I've got plenty of this element glue from the banjo shop and it occurred to me that I could take and lift up on these corners and put some glue on this little thing here shove it up under there and then put a clamp like one on top one on the bottom on these corners and then uh, and then I've got some more, I've got some more smaller clamps I can put one on each corner. That would help. Because the way I glued this table, I was squeezing glue out of this tube and having a pretty hard time to get it out. So I got a lot of gobs of glue out there in the middle. But it was sure, you know, be a, a better table, a stronger and more stout table if it had you know, some support on the edges. And that's not that hard to do. And by the way, let me say this. I love fixing things. I, I just was thinking about it. Uh, I don't know what got me thinking about it, but I was thinking about it, and it really nothing. Well, maybe it's what I said a while ago about the time I met a young lady when I was single, and she asked me what I like to do, and I said I like to work, you know. But I do. I like to work. And I don't mean loading watermelons in the back of a truck or, you know, unloading trailer trucks or I've done all those kind of jobs. <laughs> and I don't like that. But fixing something like this, I used to work in a furniture shop down in Martin, Georgia. It was called uh, Strip, Strip Ease and it had a picture of that little girl on the suntan lotion commercial where the dog was pulling her bathing suit bottom down and was going to said something about, you know, covering up all your sun, all your places where the sun could get in there and burn you, you know, or something. I don't know what it said. But uh, they had taken that picture of that little girl, and, and uh, that was the name of their business because this guy had invented these alkaline stripping machines. I don't know if they're still in business or not. I, I, a lot of people that worked there used to wonder what the, you know, what the, if there was any consequences of using those machines to the local water supply and stuff like that. That's beside the point though. My job, I was the lacquer man, but I was also the antique restoration guy. They, the guys, most of the guys that worked there that had been there a long time, they wanted to be over to part of the plant. Well, I did too, but you know, they, were, they had been there. So they had earned the right to be over there welding and cutting metal and doing all that, which I also kind of wanted to do. But they let me, they let me run a restoration shop for antique furniture. And people would bring in an old piece of antique furniture and they'd give it to me and I had an old separate room in the back and I'd, we'd strip it. And then I had to, uh, when you strip it, it would raise the grain on the furniture. And so I had to go in and uh, sand the, the grain back down smooth uh, and then I would restore it and sometimes it was pretty easy 
And sometimes it was more complicated. I remember this one piece of furniture had a set of uh, lion's feet. It was a big table with lion claws. And then not one of them claws, the end of the claw had been knocked off. It wasn't there no more. And they wanted that table restored and it was mahogany, if memory serves me right. So my job was to, you know, I asked him, I asked the guy that, that ran the place, I said, how am I gonna, how am I gonna replace these lion claws? He said, you carve one. I said, really? He said, yeah. Carve a lion claw piece and glue it on there. And I was like, whew, that was a challenge. So, but I'd never done it before, so I did it. Yeah, it worked out pretty good, you know, after we stained it and all, you really couldn't tell that it had ever been broke off. So, man, I love doing that kind of work. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, just all kind of, I just think all kind of pieces of furniture that came in and out of there that I fixed. Uh, I wound up leaving that job, not because I didn't like it, but for one thing, I couldn't make enough money to live off of. And the other thing is my, one of my wives had kind of gotten involved with the chicken hauler. Uh, while I was working in there, she kind of worked out a, oh, a little love affair thing with a chicken hauler, and she didn't want me anymore. And so, man, I just dropped my glue and made a big mess here. And I bet I ain't gonna be able to fix that. I might have to, let me, let me get this corner done. And then I'll have to figure out what to do with the rest of the glue that's in there. But anyway, I, I, uh, she told me to get out of here one night. She said, why don't you just get out of here? She got mad at me because I wouldn't fight with her. She said, I've had more than one woman say that. You don't love me enough to fight with me, then get out of here. Well, I, I got up from the table and I called the trucking company down the road and they was hiring. Trucking companies are always hiring. At least they were back then, back before they fixed it up so that nobody wants to drive a truck anymore. Thank you, Ronald Reagan. And if y'all love Ronald Reagan, good for you, but he, they destroyed the truck driving industry. I'll just say that. If y'all want to argue with me, feel free to. I'll, I'll, I'll have that argument with you. Anyway, so I called down the road and there was a company down there and I said, I'm looking for a truck driving job. And he said, well, you called the right place. We got lots of them. And I said, well, here's what I want. I want you to put me a truck, send me out, and I don't want to come back for a long time. He said, man, we can do that. So I, I drove down there. He gave me a nice truck with a big old long nose Ford, a new one with a 3406 cat in it. Man, I love that truck. I went on the road and the next time I seen that woman was to sign the paper so that we could become officially no longer attached to each other. That was the end of that. Anyway, where I was going with this was I left the job because, because I left my whole life. <laughs> I went out. I went out and hit the road. That's a talent I have. I have a talent for being able to pick up and disappear. Um, if you don't believe me, just ask some of my ex-wives. But how did I get on to that? I'm just saying that I really enjoyed that job. That's where I was coming from with that. I really enjoyed that job. I didn't really want to leave it. But between not making enough money to be able to buy groceries and pay rent, and that other lady telling me to get out of there wanting me, wanting me to have a love life with that chicken hauler. Anyway, between those things, I stopped doing that. But I, luckily, now that I'm retired, I can go back to fixing things. I don't have to worry about making money because the government is paying me back all that money that I gave them all those years while I was out there driving trucks and stuff like that. So now I get to sit around my own place here and do my own thing. And I sure do like it. I like it real good. I don't care what I don't care what 63 Impaler says about it. <laughs> he sent me something funny. He sent me something about a chainsaw. Somebody was having a conversation to, with him about his collection of chainsaws and they started talking about electric chainsaws and he sent them a picture. Y'all may not remember this, but uh, I used to have this old 
electric chainsaw that was old, it'd been around, I'd had it forever. It was never much to speak of. It's probably one of them $15, you know, hardware store chainsaws when I got it. Kind of thing you could get down at Ace Hardware or something. And, oh, I used it and used it and used it and, and I didn't even, nobody ever really showed me how to sharpen a blade. So every once in a while I'd buy a new blade, but I never did sharpen it. Anyway, I, and, and I broke pieces off of it. You know, there was, there was oil that was leaking all over the place and everything. But at a certain point, because he's so into chainsaws, I sent it to him because I told him, you ain't never gonna have a chainsaw as fine as this one right here. You should you should put this in the chainsaw museum because up in the top of his garage when he almost burnt down he's got a collection of chainsaws hanging from the ceiling and, and i said that i'm gonna i'm gonna do you a big favor here and i'm gonna give you my old chainsaw you can put it up in the ceiling because you ain't got nothing real nice like this hanging up there so right now he has my old yellow electric chainsaw hanging in the top of his building and he, he sent a picture of that off to some guy in Australia, I think he was, or something, because they was they were talking about how they didn't like electric chainsaws and all. See, that's the thing with me. I'll, I'll have a conversation going, and I can't remember how I got here or where I was going with it. How did I get talking about that? Maybe I was talking about 63 Impala or 2 door alien or wire. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway. Uh... So this has nothing to do with any of my ex-wives and it has nothing to do with the chicken hauler she ran off with. Oh, I was talking about how much I like doing this kind of work here. See, this is probably a little bit cylinder, similar, not, not cylinder, a little bit similar to the kind of work I would have done working in the antique furniture shop. It's just kind of, I really did like. And now I don't have to worry about making enough money to survive because I am a ward of the federal government now. I have worked long enough so they decided that it's okay if I take the rest of my life off and they're giving me back money that I paid them every week for my whole life while I was working. That's a beautiful setup right there. I like it. I don't care. I don't care who wants to get rid of it. I'm for keeping it that way because it's working for me. I wish I hadn't broke this jar of of syrup, syrup jello syrup glue we just had to broke this jar of glue I, I sure am prone to make a mess now with that being the way it is but i still get these corners stuck up in here good now let's see where's my this thing need to be adjusted and some more is that about right that's feel about right so i'm going to put that on there like that i want that to be good and snug now yeah put that on there good and snug I might tighten that a little bit more. But anyway, I got a kick out of old Waylon Wire. He sent me that thing, you know, that picture of that chainsaw, about him having a conversation with that Australian guy about the fine quality of these electrical chainsaws, especially the one I had that I gave him a long time ago. So I guess now I'll go see if I can find me a glue bottle. It's about empty that I can drain this into. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut y'all off, but y'all are in charge. Y'all keep an eye on this table while I'm gone. Don't let, don't let the wolves get in here. No bad things happen. I'm gonna go find a place to put this and we'll come back and we're gonna get to work on that big table over there. Y'all got any questions about that? Just write a letter to Cutworm 59 out in Arkansas. Does he live in Arkansas or Indiana? I never can. I get those mixed up all the time. I think he's in Arkansas. Send him out to, send him out to Arkansas. Just send it to Arkansas, Indiana. That'll work. He'll get it. Put $100 bills in there with it and just tell him whatever you want to tell him. Ask him whatever you ask him and he'll, he'll get back to me and we'll talk about all that important stuff. Okay? Okay. Love y'all. It occurred to me that rather than going down there and looking for a bottle of uh, glue with a good cap on it that I can pour that into, I got, uh, I got some of these rubber these European gloves, like the European auto mechanics wear to keep their fingers from getting glue or grease on them. I could take me one of these European gloves, put it right there, and then put my cap over that, see? That would airtight this bottle, and it would store. Oh, that, that's cracked, too. That ain't no good. That might still work, though. 
I could do that. Now, don't that look good? That, now, ain't that a cool fix? I mean, did you ever think you were going to see anything as, in, as ingenious and industrious as that today coming out of my channel? No, of course you didn't. Y'all just don't got no idea how much, how much smarts as I got that I'm putting out here. I bet I'm putting out 30 watts of smartness all any any moment of time when you want to take a measurement. I bet I'm putting out 100, 100, 100 watts sometimes. I got glue on the corners on the table here. That ain't so good. I mean, it might not matter, but it seems like it'd be better if I wiped it off, don't y'all think? Maybe. Maybe that'd be better. It didn't make a mess down here like it did down there, so. I got all over my fingers though. That's kind of how I roll, you know. I, anytime I work on anything, I get it all over me. Oh, that's sticky too. Maybe I'll take this back down yonder, put it down before I get glued to it. All right, she's like straight ball of fire. Okay, this table's set overnight, so I'm gonna take the. Uh, clamps off of it and we'll see how it did. That looks like a pretty good little table right there. Uh, certainly, certainly better than it was. And appears to be rather functional. 